We are living in a modern world and generation where technology is undisputedly changing faster than we can keep up. Be it in ways that we pursue our daily lives, in terms of work, social engagements, healthcare, education, or just all in all how we now can relate to one another and to the external world within a click. An astronomical surge and an endless stream of helpful new apps are being developed to add to our phones, giving us more control to handle things and get work done at the comfort of our hands. More so, the escalation of artificial intelligence is improving how we use information and reduction of human error are making things more effective and efficient. When we talk about the speed, breadth, and depth of current breakthroughs now. It's funny to note that, it apparently has no traces of earlier occurrence, or historically related, to, what we are now seeing, but only mushrooming factor being trying to make our lives exciting and easier than previous generations. Also, it's advancing so fast that almost every sector in every country, is feeling its impact and is benefiting from it. Now more than ever. In as much as this is exciting to note, as the old saying goes, great power comes with great responsibilities. We still have been faced with a self-inflicted wound that has caused our own environments to suffer. With the scaling up in manufacturing, processing plants, automobile, and many others, in their production of goods and services to need human demand, the atmosphere is getting saturated with toxic waste, which is damaging our ecosystem, and also non-biodegradable waste plastics that we keep promoting are polluting our environment. That being said, is potentially another said topic and debate on its own. If we dug in deep, as to whether technology has brought more harm than good, to the environment. Because, honestly, weights are on both ends. But still, the hunt for new smarter ways to support our development, has always been a key driver of technological advancement. And for that we cannot ignore that fact. Today as our civilization faces a new unprecedented challenges. Technology can and is still play a crucial role in decoupling development and environmental degradation. The ascend of vibrant and new technology has great potential to transform environmental protection. In this video, I will run you through some exciting and cool high-tech innovations and companies behind them that are playing a major role in ensuring that our ecosystem is preserved and help in preserving our only environment today. Before I could go further, it's interesting to note that we live on a planet that is 70% covered by water and only 30% of land, making Earth a water-bone planet. The oceans alone contains 97% of water, leaving only 3% of fresh water. The one we use in our homes today. One in nine people do not have safe and clean water to drink. And more than third of that margin is from Africa. Sad to note that in some places women have to travel long distances in order to have safe and clean water for drinking and storage. Here is where something cool comes in. Introducing polyglue. It is a coagulant, which is a chemical that promotes the separation of solid particles from a liquid. This causes the particles to form loose aggregations, or flock which then settle to the bottom. Its core function is to capture all the impurities and sticking all the dirt to the bottom of the container. In just a few noticeable moments, all dirt clutters and settles at the bottom, leaving clear water at the top, that is drinkable. The purifying agent was invented and produced by a small Japanese Osaka-based company called Nippon Polyglue, with an intent to reduce incidences of waterborne-related illness. The key ingredient of this magic powder is polyglutamic acid, PGA, an amino acid formed by bacterial fermentation, which is water-soluble, biodegradable and edible. This sticky substance is made from, surprisingly, fermented soybeans, which is a purely natural substance and eco-friendly product, and is very much approved by World Health Organization standards of safe water. According to Nippon Poly Glue Company, the creators of the product, just one gram of it can clear up to five liters of polluted water. However, the water will just need to be filtered and later boiled or chlorinated to be ready for use. Another tech that is innovative, and out of the box, that is worth on this list, is coming from a company of young and enthusiastic diverse team of computer engineers and programmers from Chicago, America. 
a company called Urban River, presents to you. Trash Bot. This is a controlled trash cleaning robot that can be done at the comfort of your home. Imagine taking out litter and trash, but this time from your home, on your computer. Yes, that's a reality with Urban River's Trash Bot. Taking trash is a game when it comes to this company that can be enjoyed at the comfort of your homes. The company has come up with an initiative of designing and making a floating bot that hovers around the waters to clear out the river's lakes and remotely. Using a web-based portal that can be operated by anyone to take out all the floating trash that is felt up the rivers. Drive around and harvest the trash from the river. Was so fun that they turned and expanded that into a game, narrated its team. The trash robot is located in the Chicago River. Anyone can drive the robot via website. The real trash will then be collected by a presence of a physical human at the banks and removed from the river. In 2017 the team installed the largest floating garden in Chicago. The initial goal was to clean it up by hand. Every other day someone would kayak out to remove this garbage. But this became too hard as Trash appeared at random times in large quantities. So they created a trash task force and went to the drawing board. The team then prototyped a remote control boat, which was capable of herding trash to a safe location where it could then be removed. This proved not only effective, but super entertaining. They later made it an interactive project by linking it up to a website and let anyone, anywhere, help clean up the trash in the Chicago River. The device comes with installed Wi-Fi for connectivity, GPS tracking with virtual GPS cage to limit the usable area to a given location directly in front of the installation, cameras for visual, and a safety tether that limits the drive area in order to prevent the device from cruising away, and also guide its way back to safety if water waves try to push it off limited drive area. The bioplastic made from fish waste. Third on the list is something phenomenal, taking you to the UK of where a 25-year-old Lucy Hughes, a student at the University of Sussex, as a final year project, recognized fish waste as a sustainable material source and invented a process for turning it into an alternative source of plastic, hoping to solve the problem of both single-use plastics and waste streams. She said of her creation. It makes no sense to me that we're using plastic, an incredibly durable material for products that have a life cycle of less than a day. This made her come up with a product we calling Marina Tex. It is a material that is clear and flexible bioplastic that is produced in sheets and designed to replace single-use plastics like plastic bags and food packaging. While at first glance this looks like an ordinary plastic it is a translucent and flexible sheet material made from fish waste and red algae. A naturally occurring substance found in red algae and fish skin and scales left over as a byproduct from the commercial fishing industry. The fish skin contains strong but flexible proteins, while the agar works as a binding agent to gel the material together. Both organic materials combine to create a bioplastic that is completely biodegradable. In the UK alone, more than 170,000 tons of fish waste is produced annually from land-based processing and 50 million tons worldwide each year. The organic fish waste is normally headed for the landfill or incineration. First investigations done by early settlers' discoveries that show that the fish skins and scales had the most potential locked up in them due to their flexibility and strength enabling protein. Plastic is an amazing material, and as a result, we have become too reliant on it. Disposal of the plastic once used becomes a challenge, as most of the plastics that are being manufactured are non biodegradable. Unlike Marinatex is an innovation of 25-year-old University of Sussex student Lucy Hughes, lifespan of this material is only six weeks, and the plastic is no more. This awesome material was as part of her final year product design course, which won the hearts of judges therefore, picking up the $35,000 top prize in the James Dyson Awards. While Hughes refined the formula for Marinatex on the stove in her student apartment, she hopes to scale up the invention into a commercially viable product. Single-use plastics are choking our oceans and killing marine life. But one young designer from the UK may have found a solution, creating a plastic out of algae and fish waste that took the James Dyson Award. Last on the list 
is something irresistible at first glance. Not only is it inspired by the look and design of the sunflower, but also have characteristics of it. Lots of houses are adding solar panels to their homes, with the intent to save on cost of paying for electricity, all the time. The logic is simple. Once you have paid for the equipment, you are basically getting free energy for a lifetime as long as the sun shines. Conventional energy is one of the cleanest sources of power and electricity because it derives its source from freely and readily available sun. It all depends on the exposure of the panel to the sun. The more the sun the panel get, the more the electricity. But most existing panels are static and only limited because they face one direction in terms of light exposure. But that was a challenge faced by solar panel lovers who went in depth to see that changes. Introducing Smart Flower. A blend between solar panels and art. Inspired by a plant. Of a sunflower. Which follows the navigation and orientation. Of the movement of the sun. To draw its energy and goes to sleep once the sun sets. The Smart Flower is no different. It has a dual access tracking system embedded in the equipment which has a tracking system and motors that moves the panels in synchronization to that of the sun all day long. One motor is for adjustment of the panel so that it's always at 90 degrees to the sun. The other motor is used for opening and closing of the panels, making the system track the sun from east to west and also up and down. Due to this feature this tech and engineering marvel produces 40% more energy than a static solar panels. According to the inventor, the Austrian manufacturing company Smartflower. It's also interesting to note that the Smartflower cleans itself up of dust or snow by folding and unfolding itself. Due to this, loss of energy output is minimized up to 5%. So, Smartflower is like a self-cleaning device. In as much as all these tech advancements are cool, let's be clear. No human technology can fully replace God's given nature's technology that services to sustain life on Earth for over billions of years in existence. The fundamental issue in previous technological revolutions has been the lightness and ignorance with which we have taken for granted healthy natural systems like forests, oceans, river basins, and reluctantly destroy it. Technology and the environment may actually be more closely linked than many think. Our technological innovations have the potential to harm our environment. But if we use them wisely and develop sustainable ideas, they could also help solve the ecological problems we've created. Tech may not be the alone answer to climate change, but it may be an important part of the solution. How really can we save our environment and ourselves from man-made climate change? We can either choose to rely on the expansion of technological innovation and economic development to find a way to sort out these man-made problems. Or we can learn from the nature itself and only allow it to recreate itself to sustain us. Like it has always been the best answer may lie somewhere in between the two extremes. Technology may eventually provide substantial solutions to our environmental woes. Ignoring our impact in the meantime, however, could have disastrous consequences. What are your thoughts and takes from this video? If you found this informative on all the relevant highlighted technologies that matters and makes a difference, which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments section below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, if not feel free to dislike so that I can improve on my videos. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.